Hello, and welcome to the Creating to Tango Accounts from Salesforce portion of the series. This video is devoted to getting data out of Salesforce for the purpose of creating accounts into Tango. Let me walk you through uh, on how I have this data configured in Salesforce first, so you can see uh, and, and you can understand what I plan to do and represent into Tango. I have here a view of my customers, and as you can see, I have only 21 records in this view. Uh, my Salesforce actually has hundreds of records within it. However, I only want to model those that have a market segment defined. So when we get to the point of actually configuring which accounts to Tango, I'm going to filter by this market segment column uh, to only show customers into Tango that have this defined. Additionally, uh, there are customers in my instance that have churn date. And what I'd like to do is capture customers that have captured, that have churned within the last 90 days. Uh, so we'll actually only bring in 20 accounts into the thing, and we'll go over that again later on uh, when we configure the filters. Uh, next, I'm going to also model the account type into Tango. And in this instance, I'm only going to bring over one account type. Uh, if you watch some of my other videos, I go into further detail what account type represents. Um, I'll, there will be more on this subject, but for right now, we're just going to keep it simple to one account type in this load. I created a field in Salesforce, a formula field that looks at the account and logically determines if this is a free paying or churned customer. And then as a result sets this value. So the Tango account status in Salesforce for me is automated and tells me exactly what this customer is. Are they a current customer? Are they getting the service for free or have they churned? Um, what I need to do with this data is reflect it into Tango. And in order to do that, there is within to Tango under the global settings feature. I'll just quickly walk you in there. Global settings here, data management, uh, data modeler, modeler, and the contract status. Uh, here, when you get in, this is what it looks like for the first time when you load it. Um, you can add as many values as you want into the three buckets. There are three buckets here, free, paying, and cancel. And so I need to add a churned bucket for the cancel, or rather a churned value, ensuring that the spelling and capitalization are the same. The capitalization doesn't matter, but as long as the spelling is the same, I'll create that value under canceled. So now, when I load this data into Tatango, that will display correctly for the Tatango sound status. Also, as you can see, I have the account name. I'll use that as part of the data set. And in this instance, I also have the ID, uh, the, the customer key. That's what I'll use as the identifier in Tatango. And there's an important note here. Um, so if you notice in this situation, this is uh, just a numerical key. You if you decide to use the Salesforce ID in your data set as the identifier into Tango, um, you can use, uh, you should use the 18 character identifier from Salesforce. Make sure not to use the 15 character. And the reason being is the 15 character ID from Salesforce is case sensitive, whereas the 18 character is not. And to Tango is also not case sensitive. So if you try to bring in the 15 character ID to Tango as the identifier, you will have issues with that. So very uh, common mistake that customers make. Um, we try to head it off right away and make sure that you're using that 18 character identifier from Salesforce. Uh, you can though use any identifier. In this situation, I'm using this customer key because this key I have available within my product, within my um, other uh, NetSuite, within my other systems. This is a common key. And so that's what I will use. So let's go ahead and jump into the Tango and take a look and start bringing this data in. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into global settings again, using this hamburger stack up here, global settings, data management, and then customer data hub. Within the customer data hub, I will click on the CRMs and we already created this integration in our previous video. If you wanna see how we did that, go ahead and watch that video but I'll go ahead and click on view integrations and I will now click on create integration. I don't need to be on the recurring tab 
to create a recurring job. This is just to see the jobs and, and be able to see what's out there, but really to create a new job um, that's recurring, I can just click the Create Integration button. Uh, once I click the Create Integration button, I have multiple options here. I'll go through each one of these um, throughout the videos. Uh, in this series, I'll cover accounts, users, and collections. But right now, let's focus on accounts. Now we're going to define the object that we're going to uh, pull the data from. So I'm going to go ahead and select account, and then the object fields that we had. So let's just go through it really quick. So first, we need that customer key. There we go. And as you type them out, you'll get the results. Uh, you do need to know the IPI name of them as you type them out. Uh, so make sure you know that. And uh, for account name, we'll just use the Salesforce standard name field. Uh, let's see. We also need the Tatango account status. Next. So as you notice here, uh, what I keep doing is I keep switching back to this demo data tab to see what are the fields that I need. Um, I can put it side by side, but I wanna be able to show you how I work and how I flow through this. So next we'll grab to Tango account type. And then we've got churn date. And I think the last one was market segment, yep. And again, I've named these in such a way where I have the same display name as the API name. Uh, but if you don't know the API name of these, don't fret. Uh, you can always ask your Salesforce admin or otherwise there are tools out there available uh, like a Chrome extension. It's uh, just Google for uh, Salesforce Chrome API names and the very first result will more than likely be the uh, ex uh, Chrome extension that allows you to have this button on your screen. And then as you're working at looking at the uh, account details on your within Salesforce, you'll be able to click this button and it will show you what the actual API name right on the screen is. So uh, remember we talked about uh, the query filter here uh, a little bit. Uh, actually, before we move on, uh, with all these fields that I'm bringing over, uh, the max character length for an attribute in Tatango is 255 characters, whether that's account ID or any other uh, character uh, length. So if I'm bringing over data, I don't want to bring over uh, long descriptive, uh, long text fields, basically, that might have more than 255 characters. Um, there are other ways to capture that data in Tatango. I'll cover that in later videos. Um, but... Um, things like that we don't want to bring into Tatango in this uh, method. So then let's not talk about the query filter. So as I mentioned earlier, we want our market segment to uh, be uh, defined. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, this is uh, SOQL uh, syntax. And uh, as you notice here, there's a tip here that uh, what, you, what you're writing, the part of the filter that you're writing now is the actual query part uh, after the where. Um, and so what you can do is you can do things like uh, market uh, segment uh, does not equal null. So let's load that preview and see what we get. And as you can see, I uh, made an error in my statement because I put a space between this does not uh, within this uh, syntax. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that, load the preview. And now I'm getting the first 10 rows as a result of this. But if you remember, I said I want to limit this data to only the recently churned customers. I want to limit the number of accounts that I have in Tatango um, based on the fact that they've churned over a certain time ago. Now, let's just talk about very quickly uh, status and why it's important. Uh, a lot of customers, when they start out with Tatango, uh, they will um, want to bring over only paying customers. So their pay their filter will be and Tatango account status equals paying, right? And this is what they'll do. Now, what's the issue here? I mean, you could go ahead with this plan. However, this will be a broken integration in the design um, 
portion. It, the design itself is is broken. Here's the reason why. Um, if you've only send over to Tatango Paying, and let's say customer key Tempest non LTD, uh, customer key fifty one. Uh, tomorrow they churn, and in, in Salesforce you've changed it to turn. This date, this row will no longer be part of this data set. Will no, it won't tell Tatango that it's churned. So in Tatango, it's just going to stay churned. Tatango data permeates um, unless you change it. So if you do nothing and this account churns in Salesforce, and your filter is set in such a way where all, you're only capturing paying because this row will no longer come over, it will stay in Tatango's paying, and you'll never have that churn reflected in Tatango. So it's very critical to make sure you're bringing over paying and churned accounts. Um, now, some customers may want to limit the number of accounts that come in um, that are churned. And what you can do is you can do something like this. You capture, by capturing churn date, you can create a filter where it, it's um, the churn date is in the last, let's see, we'll do 60 days. And so this way, I'll capture all those churn date. And oops, I made a query here, uh, a query mistake here. So what I'll do here is I will add churn date is in the last 60 days or the Tatango account status does not equal churned. So in effect, this query will give me, oops, I forgot to put quotes around this item. So in effect, this query will say market segment is not null, and one of these two criteria is met, which is the churn date is not in the last 60 days, or the Tango account status does not equal churned. And so, as you can see here, I'm receiving my churned items, and when we finally load this data, uh, only those customers that have not churned in the last 60 days will be loaded. So the total number of records that will be here will be 20. Uh, if you notice here, we have 21 records. Uh, one of them has a churn date that's over 60 days old. So when we uh, save this job, it'll show 20 records being coming over to Tango. So let's go ahead and finalize this so we can move on. Uh, so for the, the column mappings, uh, to orient you against the screen, on the left-hand side, your fields from Salesforce. On the right-hand side, is what that's going to be represented by into Tango. And then down here, dimensions. Uh, dimensions is a way to group your data together. It's not critical on the data loads that you get these right. These are more for the business team to set correctly so they can say, okay, uh, the churn date is a contracts element. Let's say market uh, segment, that's um, for, for the purpose of campaigns. And then the last column here is the format, which lets you say what type of data point this is. Let's go through this, do these one by one, and we'll finish up this mapping exercise. For the column mapping, I'll use customer key. Uh, that's what my account ID is. That's what, uh, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, for churn date, I'm going to then uh, make this as a date. That's the format and I'm going to leave this as is. Now, I do have the option here to scroll through this list and see if I can find this attribute as if it already exists in Tango. Like, for example, I could just send this churn date to cancellation date, and that is a field that already exists in Tango. You can see all fields that exist in Tango under the data modeler. As you're doing this mapping, I do want to note, you have the option here to type in a brand new field name for how this attribute will be stored into Tango. However, I strongly suggest that you retain as often as possible the same API name that's coming over. So what customers will do is they'll go, oh, well, this is the market segment. So I'll go ahead and create a new attribute into Tango called market segment. Instead, I strongly suggest you use the same value as on the left being delivered from Salesforce to ensure API names match between Salesforce and Tango and then change the display name of this attribute later on in the data modeler. Um, so this is a text field. 
uh, name. Uh, there's a special attribute into Tango for name, which is account underscore name. And you should always set your name field there. Uh, to Tango account status, that actually exists into Tango as an attribute that where I want to send this data to, which is status. This is the, where we talked about free paying or canceled. And then account type also exists. That's in account type. Uh, now, all of these attributes I go through in one of my previous videos. Um, uh, and I su strongly suggest if you have questions about that to review that video, it'll be a great help. So again, to review. I've, I'm using customer key as the account ID into Tango. The churn date is going to go to cancellation date. Market segment, I'm going to create a new text attribute called market segment. Uh, name goes to account underscore name. To Tango account status will float as status into Tango. To Tango account type will float account type into Tango. And then I will validate the data. This is basically checking that the row, um, the column item formatting conforms to this column item formatting that you've defined here. Now that once the validation is successful, uh, you'll never have to provide your email address because you'll be logged in. I'm not logged in right now, uh, but I'll put in my email address here and I can give this a description, something like um, SFDC accounts. And then comes the scheduling portion. So within the scheduling portion, you can choose once by minutes, hourly, daily, whatever you want. Uh, most customers choose hourly. Uh, we only sync based on the Delta. So uh, if uh, you're concerned about API footprints and things like that, uh, we deal with that quite a bit, um, which in the sense that we get that question quite a bit and we do make every effort to reduce the number of API calls. Uh, we use bulk API and we only sync on Delta. So it should be a very small s s footprint in your environment, even if you're syncing every hour. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that sync immediately after saving is checkmark, which will start sending the data as soon as I hit the, the save and sync button. And also I'll enable the integration scheduling right away so that it goes every hour. Now what I could do here is I could say, um, don't enable the integration scheduling um, and save this job for later. If I uncheck these two, two items right away for the purpose of setting it up in the future, I can just um, uncheck these two and keep working, add more fields uh, later on and uh, do that. But now I'll just hit save and sync to let it go.